Hi, Peg and Shooter here. I thought I would change um, where I normally film and uh, try something. Try to show you something a little bit different. One of my other hobbies besides shooting and fishing is making mead. Now, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. Now, it can be very complex or it can be very easy. In this installment, I'm going to show you how to make the most simple manner of mead there is to make. Uh, what's required is a, and this is the first type that was taught to me in a class when I lived in Phoenix. Uh, you want to make sure first off everything is very, very clean. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw in a video of the boiling process right here. Um, so essentially you boil up everything, you make sure it's all clean, or there's sanitizing methods like using uh, very light bleach or by using a uh, sanitizer you can get from most uh, brew shops. And essentially your hands also included, you want to make sure those are uh, very much sanitized as well. So I usually keep some sanitizer around when I'm doing this. Um, but this is the most basic method. Uh, you basically, you need some purified water. The clean water is good. Uh, you can use tap water, but I suggest boiling it first and letting it cool down before you use it, if you're going to. But you want to use a uh, jug of water. If you do use a plastic jug, make sure you have the number one inside there. Uh, it's because that signifies the purity of the plastic and you don't want to use anything that's kind of unpure because it'll leach flavors into the mead. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is some form of yeast. Um, in this instance, I have used bread yeast before. It is not the best mead in the world, but it does work. Uh, I do suggest either a wine or a ale mead or mead, a wine or an ale uh, yeast. Um, I have used champagne yeast. It takes a lot longer for it to actually uh, ferment. Uh, I suggest that you have some sort of funnel, and all of this has been boiled before in the video, uh, to get it in there. <clears throat> you need your honey. Uh, I suggest, it doesn't matter what brand so don't don't pay attention to the brand on this uh but i suggest that it says something like that where it says that it's raw and filtered uh unfiltered is okay um but raw is best the reason why raw is best is because the less the more you'll get more honey flavor out of the raw the more it's been pasteurized the more it's been processed uh, the more additives have been done, added to it, and sugar does not add very much. In fact, sugar is very bad to, like processed sugar, is very bad to uh, ferment. It tastes awful. Uh, anything pure is good. Uh, so for a gallon, you're going to want probably about two and a half to three uh, pounds of, of honey, which is not inexpensive. And then, one of the things I find works really well, instead of the nutrients, the powdered nutrients you'd get at a brew shop, I find dried fruit. Blueberry is one of my favorites to use, however you can use anything you like. If you like dried cherries, raisins, whatever you want. I prefer blueberries. Uh, and you'll need a few of those. Um, and that basically takes the place of the nutrients. Now, for the very inexpensive, you take a balloon, and that's going to be your airlock. Uh, there is an airlock that you can buy for a glass bottle that you put water in and it only lets air out in one direction. This is a cheap, inexpensive method. Uh, I'll try to throw a picture in here of the first one I made with this. And I found a happy face one. Find something that makes you happy. I found some polka dots. This is good. Uh, so what we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the... Uh, the uh, yeast and we're gonna basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna rehydrate it we want to put it in a bowl with some plain water so you see I have my bowl here this has been the bowl has been uh, 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 sanitized and then I'm gonna take just some of the water from here and pour it into the bowl and we're gonna use that to hydrate the uh, yeast you want to make sure 
your yeast is hydrated before you pitch it. And pitching, essentially, all pitching is, is pouring it into your mead. All pitching is, is pouring it into your mead mixture. So that's the, that's the, the tricky language that's used. So I'm going to let that hydrate a bit, and then I'll mix it up a little. Uh, I'm going to pour off uh, about a couple of cups worth of water out of the uh, gallon jug here because we need room to pour the meat in, or the honey in. I get so excited when I make meat, I like it. So basically we have a little bit of room there. I'm going to open up a little bit more, and if we need more room, we can always pour, or if we need more water, we can always pour it back in. In fact, we're probably going to need to pour it back in to wash the uh, honey down. So what I also did is I sanitized my funnel. So I'm going to put the funnel in, and then I'm going to take the honey, and I'm just going to pour it right in. So the honey goes in, and unfortunately this part could take a while. Um, Sometimes I'll heat up the honey, and uh, this is going to take a very long time that direction. We're going to see if we can get it to come through, and then we'll pour it directly in using another method, because this is going to take a very long time this way. Uh, I try to avoid heating up the honey, because the more you heat honey, the less flavor you get out of it later. Uh, that's why pasteurized honey is kind of silly because you lose your flavor from the pasteurization process and you end up uh, you end up uh, really not doing anything for it pasteurizing honey honey doesn't get botulism it's one of the few things that doesn't uh, doesn't have anything that would that it would live in so it really doesn't go bad it crystallizes you heat it up a little bit and it goes back into its liquid form but that's pretty much it. So pasteurized honey, unless it has a whole bunch of other junk in it, is kind of a silly thing. There's no point to it. So what you do want to do, though, is in a mixture like this where you have your yeast, you definitely want to make sure all of your component. You don't want to be adding anything that is a uh, contaminant to it. So you want to make sure you have all that stuff clean. But the honey itself is not going to be one of the components that causes the problem. So let's try this like this. I used to have a better funnel that would allow me to pour honey much better. But when I moved, I got rid of a bunch of this stuff because I wasn't going to be making mead for a while. However, I've gotten the hankering for it lately. To make it at least. I can't drink it. But uh, I've gotten the hankering for it to make it, and I decided I would show you guys how I do it. So this is almost the full three pounds, and I'm probably going to make it in, but, yep. So it made it to pretty close to the full three pounds. I'm going to stop right there because it doesn't need to all be in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw some blueberries in there. Now, the blueberries, what they do is they add a few nutrients for the mead because to uh, basically to get started on and to really pick up. The other thing I find is naturally blueberries have a little bit of uh, yeast on them, so it does help with the fermentation process as well to have them in there. And I usually put in a few, not a lot, and you can see now that there's some separation down in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a really good shake. So I'm going to put the top on really good, and I'm going to mix this up really good and shake it up really good. This is going to get a little bit of extra air in there. Oxygenate this really good. And then, there we go. That's really well mixed. 
So now we've got this really well mixed. We're going to take the top off and we're going to let some of that fuzz go down, or some of the uh, fluff go down. And now I'm going to mix this uh, the yeast together with the water because we want to make sure it's well mixed. Now this much yeast could easily do a couple gallons. Uh, and once again, bread yeast, not the best thing for this. However, it will work. This will be drinkable. It will be a little harsh, but it will be drinkable. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my handy dandy funnel and I'm going to pitch the yeast, which essentially is pouring it directly into the bottle. So now the yeast is in there and that's going to start eating all the stuff that's all that honey and all the sugars in the honey and it's going to start eating up the blueberries and that's going to cause the blueberries or that's going to the blueberries are going to plump up they're going to end up getting a little more hydrated and that's going to cause the fermentation to start now the fermentation what that's going to do is that's going to convert all the sugars in this into alcohol so and a good mead can be up and upwards of 18 percent i've even seen some a little bit higher so now, during the fermentation process, there's going to be a lot of CO2 that's released from the uh, liquid and the, um, the yeast eating the sugars. So what we want to do now is we want to make it so that CO2 gas can escape, but we can't get more air in. So now, at this point, we're going to take a regular pin, push pin, and we're going to push it through the back of the balloon making a small hole. I actually made two small holes. And then the balloon is going to go right over the top of the bottle. Just like that. So all it's going to do is it's going to sit there. So now as the yeast eats the sugars, it's going to take and push out the CO2, which you can actually already see a few bubbles forming. And that's eventually going to expand this, and this is going to be sitting up on top, just like my other picture with the uh, happy face balloon. That's going to be sitting up on top, and it's going to be just open. It's not going to be inflated. It's going to be open. And what that's going to allow is that's going to allow some of the CO2 to escape, but it's not going to let any air in because you're going to have the constant CO2 escaping. Uh, eventually, though, in probably about a month or two's time, the yeast will have pretty much died off. It'll all fall down to the bottom. Uh, there won't be any uh, honey left in there in solid form. Uh, the blueberries will be kind of hollowy and fluffy and fat. And this will be kind of limp on top like it is now. And eventually, that's going to be that's going to mean that the uh, process is pretty much stopped. At that point, what you're going to want to do is cap it and get to make sure like every couple of day every day check it to see if there's still co2 coming out if there is then you're going to give it a little more time racking like that uh the very final step is you're going to then move it into another jug if you've got another one of these or if you've got a glass jug you're going to move it into that and you're going to cap it off and then you're just going to store it for a couple of for six to nine months and at that point, you've got mead. Now, as soon as the fermentation process is done, you've actually got mead. And it's drinkable. It's just not really good drinkable. So you really want to give it that time to kind of turn into a nice smooth drink. Now, what normally happens with this kind is, is it'll be a little harsher, but you'll have the taste of the honey and the heat of the honey. But you'll have you'll basically end up with a honey wine uh, with some of the other ones with the better yeasts you can end up with uh, some really smooth really nice honey overtones you can add different fruits during the racking process you can add herbs and you can really change it and customize it for your tastes but this is a very very basic mead making uh, this is all that's required to make it uh, however, there are much better ways, and in the future I'll probably show you another way. Uh, this is Pagan Shooter. Go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, share if this helps. 
uh, comment. Have you ever made mead? Do you make beer? Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time.